Hello, everyone. I'm Father Jim Sullivan, pastor of the beautiful Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Waterbury, Connecticut. With a cornerstone laid in 1926 and a dedication in 1928, the Basilica is and always has been considered the mother church of the entire area. From its very beginning, it was described as the most beautiful church in New England, and so many of us believe that it still is. We are so thankful to God for the past 173 years and all the pastors who has served and nourished and fed the Catholic faithful of Waterbury. From our very humble beginnings in 1847, we're thankful for our very first pastor, Father William O'Neill. The Catholic population began to grow so quickly that within 10 years, a new church was needed. And so in 1857, the Immaculate Conception was constructed on East Main Street with its first pastor, Father Hendrickin, the mentor to our own parish son, Father McGivney. Shortly after 1907, the likes of Monsignor Slocum, a true visionary, an eloquent preacher, he's the one responsible for also laying the cornerstone of St. Mary's Hospital. The Catholic population continued to grow and again a new church was needed. So right here, 1928, our first pastor, Father McGurk, dedicated the Immaculate Conception Church in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Fast forward a number of decades in recent memory, of course, Father Blanchfield, principal of Sacred Heart High School for so many years and pastor here from 1978 to 1991 followed, of course, by Monsignor Bevins, who did so much to the church, both spiritually and enhancing its beauty. And lastly, in very recent memory, Father Chris Ford, who restored so much of the church to its original grandeur. As your newest pastor, and having the privilege of following the footsteps of so many who have gone before me, I'd like to share with you something that I am extremely excited and passionate about. It's called the Forward in Faith Campaign, a first of its kind in the entire Archdiocese of Hartford that includes enhancing the spiritual needs and as needed physical needs of every church in the Archdiocese. Come with me. I'd like to share with you some of my dreams and visions as we move beyond 173 years well into the future continue to praise God in this holy church. The existing 92-year-old terracotta tile roof, expected to last 100 years, is coming to the end of its life. We recently secured the entire ridge, secured any loose tile, checked all loose flashing, and re-caulked and secured the gutters. The Forward in Faith campaign is concerned not only with current needs, but also with future needs and initiatives. And one of those future needs, whether it be another 10 years or 20 years, one of those future needs will most certainly be the need for new gutters and a new roof on our beautiful Basilica. Friends, we are now in the basement, the church hall of the Basilica, and if only these walls could talk. With so many events and gatherings and parties and dances and religious education and events for the needy and the homeless that have occurred in this space in the last 92 years. Monsignor Bevins had a beautiful vision for the interior, his restoration of the ceiling, the repainting and the gilding in gold so beautifully accomplished 25 years ago in 1995. His greatest accomplishment, he says, however, is the commencement of the 24-hour Adoration Chapel. 24 hours a day of prayer also for the last 25 years. For Father Ford, it was the moving of the altar centered under the baldacchino. The restoration and cleaning of the statue of Mary, that of St. Joseph and the Sacred Heart. The cleaning of the mosaic behind the baldacchino and the restoration of the 14 stations of the cross. Friends, just as Monsignor Bevins and Father Ford had their visions as well as the pastors before them, my vision is a complete restoration of the church hall. Some of it has already begun. We have a brand new heating system in the basilica. High efficiency will last many decades. 
You can see the pipes around the perimeter. They will be covered in panels and decorative carpentry. There will be a new drop ceiling, new flooring, new technology. The stage will be completed. And yes, there will be air conditioning. One of the most exciting things will be a new elevator. And that elevator will be placed on the exterior of the basilica, matching the exterior architecture. Currently, it's very difficult for a number of people to come down here. I envision, friends, this church hall being like the arms of a mother. And so many events happening here, weddings, funeral impasses, gatherings for the needy and the homeless, church parties and events, inviting so many to what I assure you will be the most beautiful church hall you have ever seen. We have never had a kitchen here in the church hall. There's never been running water here simply a refrigerator. So follow me to the new kitchen. Friends, this will be our new kitchen. In the past few weeks, we've taken down the partitions and the office walls that were here in the storage areas. What will happen in the future? This area over here will be a fully working kitchen. Here there will be a, a large island for preparation. Here for Sunday morning after mass, we're going to have a beautiful coffee bar, a place for the community to gather and through these walls will be a food pantry. Everything begins with a seed. And friends, we've planted the first seed in anticipation of a beautiful growth. We already built uh, the Office for Religious Education. These walls have been framed and sheetrocked, uh, practically just for storage of tables and chairs. Behind me will be something most beautiful, a full wall 18-foot mural of one of the most celebratory events in the entire Bible, the wedding feast of Cana. Friends, this will be our welcome area, simply a closed closet with a reception desk, and whether someone comes in from the new elevator or from the upper level of the basilica, this will be a place where all will feel welcomed. And may I now show you something of a very practical nature. We currently have two bathrooms. They're used on a daily basis and will continue to be used as such. But this area here will be two brand new, gorgeous bathrooms, used primarily for all of our larger events. I'd like to show you now something now that I am most excited about for our youth. We're walking now through a, simply a storage area into the area. We're now in the room under the altar in the Baldacchino known as the crypt. In the past, this room has been used for RCIA classes, the distribution of Christmas gifts for the needy and the homeless, different events and activities. This room too will be completely restored. New drop ceiling, painting of the walls, flooring, carpet, technology, new lighting. What this room will be is a room exclusively for youth and young adults because the youth and young adults are the future of our basilica. Friends, that's a little bit of an overview of what we hope to achieve here in the church hall. It is going to be magnificent. It is going to be beautiful. I think you know that I'm not asking for myself. This is the first major fundraiser that we've had in the basilica for 25 years since Monsignor Bevins restored the beautiful seedling of the interior. In a certain sense, I feel like I'm asking on behalf of our first pastor of 1847, Father O'Neill, or Father McGurk, or Father Hendrickin, or Monsignor Slocum, Monsignor Strzok, Father Blanchfield, Monsignor Bevins, Father Ford. Because all of us have the same goal, the same passion, to see the Basilica thrive into the future. The Hartford Bishops Foundation, the Forward in Faith campaign is about the present, our current needs, but it's not only about the present, it sees into the future. Can I invite you to give what, whatever you're capable of giving, large or small, every little bit will help benefit the goal that we hope to achieve. I am so proud to be your pastor and I am grateful to all of you. As a beautiful engraving over the entrance to the basilica says, 
Domus Dei at Porticelli, the house of God and the gate of heaven. God bless to all.